by far the most powerful way to share code among different displays and process books and different process books in general is to build an add-in. Uh, let's take a look at a quick add-in here. First of all, I'm going to go into the add-in manager. This is part of process book. As you can see, we have a selection of add-ins here. These are those add-ins that have been registered with Windows on this machine. Now, this is the one we're, we're, gonna, we're going to be doing. I can load or unload it from here or load it permanently on startup. And the way this particular add-in works is when you launch a display, if you double click on a place where you find no objects, there we go, you see this little calendar appears. Now this is going to work no matter what you've got up on your screen. I'll go ahead and launch another display and we're seeing the same effect. So this is an example of how we can make use of the add-in technology that we've built into Process Book. And in order to do this, you're going to need a copy of Visual Basic 6. Uh, that's kind of hard to come by nowadays. If you, as you may already know, Microsoft doesn't sell Visual Basic 6 anymore. However, if you get the Visual Studio release from Microsoft, or Visual Studio.net, I believe, uh, you can request the Visual Basic 6 media. There's a wizard that comes in VB6 that is the most convenient way to build this add-in. That's what we're going to be demonstrating in a few minutes. I'm going to start to build this add-in by using the wizard in Visual Basic. So I'm going to go into, this is going to be Microsoft Visual Basic. And the type of project we're going to build is an add-in. So I'll go ahead and choose add-in. And when you choose add-in, you'll notice, if we look at the Project Explorer here, you'll notice you get a form this is the designer. And let's see. I guess a little bit easier for us to fit here. Now this is uh, this is some graphical user interface to the selection of how you want to build this add-in. Now in this case, I need to create this as a process book add-in, and I also need to, if I wanted to choose the version, I could do that right here. Uh, I could choose some of the behavior here. But more importantly, I could go into the code, let me choose View Code, and I can remove a lot of this boilerplate. Now this wizard builds a tremendous amount of boilerplate, and all we really need is the on-connect and on-disconnect subroutines. So all these other things, all the variable definitions, these subroutines here, all of these I can delete. And this is this is one of the ones I'd like to keep. It's the add instance on connection. This is the subroutine that executes when you load the add-in. Except all I need is the stub. I don't need any of the code that goes with it, and I'm in fact going to delete it. So the first step here is to go ahead and get rid of all the boilerplate that you think you don't need. Now, obviously this is useful stuff. If I were trying a more complex example, some of these things may be critical things like manipulating toolbars and whatnot. But in this case, I'm simply interested in a certain behavior when we load the add-in and a certain behavior when we, uh, when we unload the add-in. So that's why I keep just these two stubs. Let's look at a couple of other things on this project that we may want to clean up at this point. Again, we just ran this add-in wizard so that we have some boilerplate. Part of the boilerplate is a form. Now, you know, this form might serve your purposes. It doesn't serve my purposes in this case. So I'm going to remove that form. I'm going to select that right mouse click and remove that form because I just won't need it in this application. I'm going to be using a different form and all that code is... Uh, I just don't want to have to deal with purging out that code and perhaps leaving behind some things that uh, interfered later on. Now, uh, at this point, we're just about ready to start writing some code that does something. Now, to get hooks into Process Book, we're going to have to somehow, when this occurs, when this add instance occurs, somehow get access to the object in Process Book called the application object. Now, if you remember, in a previous example using with events, we were able to get access to application objects. In fact, that's where we're going to start here. 
So let's take a look at that. It's time for us to define some variables that are going to be used in here. I'm going to make it real simple. I'm going to define two variables, x and y. We'll say define with events x as a process book object library dot application. We're going to define that to be the application object in process book. Now, did you notice IntelliSense could not figure out what this is? When I put my cursor off of there, uh, we don't see any of the capitalization you normally see that indicates that we recognize what that object is. The reason that is is because we haven't, you know, we're in a different application here, we haven't made reference to the process book object library. So in order to do that, I need to go into the project menu and under project there's a section called references. This is where we need to go out and find references to process book. Now since process book is installed on this machine, it shouldn't be hard. There we go. We see Pi Process Book symbol and uh, and type library. Uh, I know this is in not the symbol library, but in the type library. That's where the large objects, such as applications and displays, are defined. The symbol library is more for smaller things like trends, etc. Well, I'll go ahead and make reference to that. And of course, now if I try doing this again. We'll dimension this as a PB object library. You notice IntelliSense recognizes it, and then application. So we'll dimension that. We'll also dimension with events Y as a display. The reason I needed to define these two variables, X as an application, Y as the display, is because I need to get access to whenever you open a new display in Process Book. Now, I can do that through the application object. If you remember, one of the events in the application object was uh, activating a display. So every time a display is activated, I would like to be able to trigger something. Also, I want to capture the double-click event when somebody double-clicks on a display. And I can do that by using this, uh, this variable Y here to represent my display. So let's look at what happens first. What happens first is we need to set x equal to something. We need to set x equal to the current process book application. So I can do that in the add instance by saying simply set x equal to, this is going to be equal to the current application, the current process book. Now I could have just uh, chosen application However, if you've got a lot of references, as I said before, there are a lot of objects that are uh, called application. We want to make sure this is the correct one. So during the initi initialization of the add-in, at this point we're saying basically X is going to be a pointer to the process book application in general. The next step is to check to see when X, which is now representing our process book, when X has had a display activate event. Now we actually can go out and find this since this was defined with events. We can find this now in the object drop down list box. It is an object that has events and as you can see one of the events is display activate. So I'm going to choose in x dot dis or underscore display activate. This is where I'm going to now go out and try to get a pointer to the specific uh, display that um, that we may be currently using. And I have an easy way of doing that. The display activate in fact returns a variable which is a process book display variable. If you look at the code here, this is returning a process book object that is, the, that is a display variable. A display is going to be a process book display. What I can do is use that return value to say let's set y equal to a display. A display is the name of the display that is being returned by the display activate, so it's the current display. Y is now going to be a pointer to that current display. Now why do we do that? Well, we do that because there's a an event in the Y object. That Y again is a variable pointing at a display. There's an event called before double click that we're very interested in this example. I would like to trigger this whenever somebody double clicks on that display.
and it's the Y variable defined with events that gives us access to that before double click event. Now the goal of this add-in is that when I double click on a display I'd like to launch a form that has a calendar on it. So let's test to see if we can make that hook work. I've learned from experience that if we simply invoke this without regard to whether the user selects an object or not, we're going to have problems. Uh, what I mean by this is we need some kind of an if-then statement to say let's just do this if the selected symbols count is equal to zero. So what I'm going to say is if y dot selected symbols, remember y is my display, so it has a selected symbols collection. We can make use of that by saying if its count is equal to zero, then, forgot to put the then, then we will do something. And that's the end of our if-then statement. So I'd like to check to see if this much works. Uh, see the benefit of doing this first, this if-then, is if the user selects a trend, for example, and double clicks on the trend, normally you would like to see the default behavior which is the trend expands and if you don't add something like this to prevent the user from or, uh, to prevent f the user from uh, from triggering this add-in script just by clicking on regular objects then of course the normal behaviors behaviors in process book won't work so uh, so let's see if this works easiest way to test this would be to compile it into a DLL and let's see if it works. So we'll do that next. Now I need to test this so I'll do something real simple in here like just put in a message box. Later on we'll worry about that calendar. And before I can test this, normally I would just make this into a DLL. But before I do that, a couple of other things. First of all, let me change the name of this. I don't like the default so I'll just call it my test one. And I'll do the same thing in the connection designer. This is the label. Now we're ready to go ahead and make it. I'll choose File, Make, MyTest1.dll. I put it into the same directory as I saved everything else. And at this point, it's not working. The reason it's not working is because through testing, I've already got this loaded. So let me unload this and do that one more time. I'll do a File, Make and we'll go ahead and override that. Yeah, see the reason that failed last time is because I had just through testing before recording this I had uh, loaded this add-in just to double check make sure everything worked and I forgot to unload it and when you've got an add-in loaded you can't go through and start overwriting it. Well actually there is a way of doing that that we'll describe later on but um, the way I'm currently configured with my compiler options I can't overwrite that. Now let's test it see if it actually worked. I just overwrote that DLL. I'll go into the Add-in Manager. And as you can see, I found that add-in. I'll go ahead and load it. And it looks like it fails. Uh, but remember, this add-in this add-in is, is triggered by the display activate method. And so far, we loaded the add-in after the, all the displays were already active. Now, if I were to switch over now, I believe that's going to load the add-in and sure enough that's what happens. As you can see now, because I've, I'm doing the display activate, that's actually what's giving us the pointer to the current display.